money to get to the first bit of business. A little later, we'll show you one of Jason's craziest projects. We've got a lot packed into the next half hour. Today is no different, except we're going to take a look at two auctions we featured last week and see how they did. The championship in P2 is much of the same. If level five motorsports drivers Scott Tucker and Christoph Bushu finish 70% of the race, they win the championship. Their competition, though, Conquest Motorsports, all season long, it's been about the good, the bad, and the ugly. They have two race wins, but they've had two mechanical problems and 12 race penalties. Today, they have to be perfect. Eric Bachelard, what does this team have to do for redemption? Street tuner, Jamie Howe. Well, both classes in the first two rounds of competition were decided by less than five seconds. In the previous round at Homestead, the ST win came down to only two one hundredths of a second. It was the APR Volkswagen of Ian Voss and Ryan Ellis who took home the win. No, and it's only the third race in P2 for Dempsey Racing. Patrick, welcome back to the American Le Mans Series. Not doing a full season this year. Third race right now. What are the goals for this team? I think really just uh... check in with Jamie Howe. In the P1 category, it's not only man versus man, but it's also machine versus machine in the form of Mazda versus Honda. Both manufacturers have their U.S. base less than an hour from the circuit and consider Long Beach to be home. But with the grid being set off of points, Dyson Racing's Guy Smith has the pole position ahead of Muscle Milk Racing's Lucas Lore. In qualifying, Andre Lauderer surprised not only the competition, but also his teammates in order to claim Audi's first Sebring pole position since 2008. Andre, it's going to be a long race. You've never raced here at Sebring. What are you expecting for the 12 hours? Um, I just checked in with Derek Walker, the program manager for Team Falcon Tire, and he said that's exactly what happened. It was a tire that went down. The problem here at Road America, even though the cars do run live telemetry, is that the track is over four miles long, and Brian was on the backside of the track. So they did lose telemetry. Brian radioed into the team. He said, I feel like I have a tire going down, but the team could not see it. He was on his way into pit lane. So it was just wrong place, wrong time being on the backside of the circuit. With Jamie Howe. Muscle Milk Picket Racing come into the race today as the championship points leaders, but they've also won the last five rounds of competition. So for most teams, it would be easy to give up, but this has not been an easy battle for the guys. Klaus Graf, you put the car on pole for the weekend, but you've had a lot of little issues with all of the cars in the field, four hours. How do you maintain focus? Wow. Joey Hand has already climbed out of the car, handing duties over to his co-driver, Dirk Mueller. Dirk did win this race back in 2008 behind the wheel of a Ferrari. Very good race. Dirk says this is a good shot at winning again. This team playing on the strategy right now. They are the first of the GT cars to make this second pit stop. Joey was complaining on the radio about the balance of the car, but the team has worked really hard with Joey to get the car performing well, and he's handing over a solid BMW to his co-driver. Petit Le Mans is a unique race because the checkered flag flies for the overall leader at 1,000 miles or 10 hours, whichever comes first. But this is multi-class sports car racing, and you have to finish 70% of your class winning distance in order to earn championship points. So let's take a look at GT. Tony, here at Extreme Speed Motorsports, how do you calculate that 70%? Um. And Oliver Gavin, the number four car, currently leading in the GT category right now, but there's still a lot of racing to go and a championship on the line. What conditions the Corvette in? I think we're in pretty good shape. This will be the final oh, pick stop for the 01 the Motorsports. It was clean and it was fast. Johannes Van Overbeck now back behind the wheel. His co-driver and team owner Scott Sharp had a fantastic set. He was complaining about the rear tires wearing off towards the end of it. So they're talking to Johannes before he got in saying, make sure you manage him. We need you there to fight right at the end of the race. Andretti is making his 24 hours of Le Mans debut, the third generation of Andretti to do so. But Marco, you're right in the middle of your open wheel season. What is it about this event that made you just have to come out and play? The weather this weekend created a lot of uncertainty for many teams. One of those teams was Black Swan Racing. They won this race last year in the GTC category, but this year they're taking on the prototypes in P2. Team owner and driver Tim Pappas learned this weekend that there is no room for error, but he also learned that every once in a while, luck can be on your side. I had a just a... One way that the team knows that those tires are up to temperature is through the use of live telemetry. We'll take a look at your pole sitter, Neil Yanni, and the Rebellion prototype. They are lacking telemetry right now. During morning warm-up, they had none. They've got the system back up and running to about 25%. That's not very reassuring, though, going into a 1,000-mile race. Not reassuring at all. They Mario Farnbacher, Enrique Cisneros, they put their trust in Kuba Gramaziak to take the car to the checkered flag. You brought it home with the race win. What does this mean to this team? Oh, really? And Greg has a big smile on his face. As usual, Greg, I know it's been a nail-biter day. You guys are back on the lead lap. What's the mentality of the team right now? 
I mean, we're, you know, the muscle milk, enjoy it, hold my breath, and hope for the best. You've had a successful driving career yourself, a successful run now as a team owner. Late stages of the race, these are championship implications. What do you say to your team to keep everybody calm? Well, I mean, I there certainly is a lot of excitement. Crew members making their way down. Johnny Cocker getting the helmet off right now. Johnny Cocker, you made that pass right at the end of the final lap of the race. How hard were you pushing out there? Uh, you used the word kids when you refer to all of your co-drivers. How much push are they putting behind you? Jamie's with them. The number four team held on to get not only the race win today, but for Oliver Gavin and Tommy Milner, it is the driver's championship. It is the manufacturer's championship, and it is the team championship. Ollie, you brought the car to the checkered flag. What's going through your mind right now? Well, lots of things. I'm just all for you. It was Ollie's fourth championship in the American Le Mans series, but Tommy Milner, this is your first. What does this mean? Uh, a lot.